Serotonin syndrome, also known as serotonin toxicity, is a potentially life-threatening condition due to excessive serotonin levels in the body. This can come from using medication as a therapy, due to drug interactions, recreational drug use, or even intentional overdoses. The end result is an increase in the amount of serotonin in the synaptic cleft able to bind serotonin receptors. For example, selective serotonin reuptake inhibitors like citalopram inhibit the reuptake of serotonin into the presynaptic neuron, meaning more is available to bind the postsynaptic receptors. Monoamine oxidase inhibitors like selegiline prevent the breakdown of serotonin, so more is available. SSRIs tend to be the most common cause because of their widespread use, while monoamine oxidase inhibitors tend to produce the more severe cases. Other medications include serotonin noradrenaline reuptake inhibitors, tricyclic antidepressants, serotonin modulators, and tryptophan supplementation, as it is converted and leads to serotonin formation. Opioids, amphetamines, and cocaine also increase serotonin release. Serotonin is found mostly in the gastrointestinal system. It is carried by platelets and also exerts effects on the central nervous system. Within the CNS, it has roles in attention, mood, sleep, cognition, and thermoregulation. In the other systems, it is involved in vasoconstriction, gastrointestinal motility, uterine contraction, and promoting platelet aggregation. Symptoms of serotonin syndrome tend to develop over a period of a few hours, with most developing the condition within 24 hours of starting the new medication. There is a large range in the severity of symptoms and are often described as a triad of neuromuscular excitation, altered mental status, and autonomic effects. Hyperreflexia manifesting as clonus, which is an involuntary rhythmic muscle contraction, is commonly seen, and it is usually in the lower limbs. Myoclonus, which is muscle twitching and tremors, also comes under neuromuscular agitation, as does hypertonia, which is a sign of more severe disease. Altered mental status manifests as delirium, agitation, insomnia, and hypervigilance. The autonomic effects can include tachycardia, high temperature, shivering, sweating, midriasis, meaning dilated pupils, and diarrhea. As a result of the high temperature, patients may present with seizures and suffer rhabdomyolysis due to the muscle breakdown. This can lead to metabolic acidosis and kidney failure, which itself can cause diffuse intravascular coagulation. Serotonin syndrome often happens when there is a change in medication or when someone already on serotonergic medication takes another agent that has a serotonergic effect, the classic combination being an SSRI and a monoamine oxidase inhibitor. Use of these medications alongside illicit drugs or herbal supplements can also increase the risk. It is thought that around 15% of people who overdose on SSRIs develop serotonin syndrome. It can affect all ages with an increasing incidence due to the widespread use of serotonergic agents. Multiple criteria exist for the diagnosis, but the most commonly accepted is the Hunter Serotonin Toxicity Criteria. These are a history of exposure to a serotonergic drug and one or more of spontaneous clonus, inducible clonus with agitation and diaphoresis, ocular clonus with agitation and diaphoresis, inducible or ocular clonus and either hypotonia or temperature above 38 degrees, or a tremor and hyperreflexia. The diagnosis is mostly clinical, but investigations that may be done include bloods looking at the full blood count, kidney function and electrolytes, gases, and creatine kinase levels. Urinalysis looking for myoglobinuria and urine toxicology looking for a particular drug trigger 
is also an option. Differential diagnosis includes neuroleptic malignant syndrome, malignant hypothermia, meningitis or encephalitis, and a CNS abscess. In most cases, the symptoms will resolve on discontinuation of the causative medication, but in moderate or severe cases, further supportive management is needed. In severe cases, which is a medical emergency, defined as significant distress, agitation and hypotonia and hypothermia above 38.5 degrees, patients may be sedated and ventilated early, which will aid in treating clonus and helping to reduce body temperature. Activated charcoal is an option in cases of overdoses arriving to medical attention within one hour. Chlorpromazine is a serotonin receptor antagonist and has been used anecdotally. In moderate cases, defined as patients experiencing distress, anxiety or agitation, but without the hypotonia and hypothermia, patients are observed for at least six hours, but do not tend to progress to severe serotonin syndrome. Benzodiazepines may still be used to treat agitation, and cyprohepatidine is a serotonin receptor antagonist, which is widely used as an antidote, despite not having a large amount of evidence.